Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar news update video. So, um, most of this video will be sort of, uh, I suppose, speculation ahead of New York Comic Con. I suppose we have the finalized information on the panels before we actually uh, get them. Um, but just before that, uh, one interesting thing happened, which seems to sort of be the the leaked reveal of the next wave of uh, McFarlane Toys avatar uh, five inch figures or the the smaller scale figures so as you can see here i think the original source for this is um as you can see here ebay i came across it first on on twitter but as you can see here the next wave seems to be four figures um we seem to be getting azula ozai uh, book three zuko and then final battle Aang. so an interesting lineup in that, okay, two new characters, that's good. Another female character in Azula, that is nice to see, definitely. Uh, in that the Azula from the Diamond Select line isn't really that great. So this actually looks like a pretty decent Azula. The Ozai here, uh, I think looks relatively good. The, the grin on his face is maybe like a little much. But I think you needed to go somewhat in that direction to get the overall best figure. Um, what do we have here? Blue fire accessory for Azula. Um, or is this their attempt at lightning? Looks more like blue fire to me, but it's a bit it's a bit half and half like they tend to go with for for the most part. Uh, Ozai comes with a sort of fire stream here. Um, so that's all fine. Uh, Zuko here comes with, uh, you can't really see that well in the packaging, and that, like, we hope it's two swords, but is it one? He does have the holder, you, you see he's wearing across his chest the kind of holster for the, for the sword, so I'm assuming that works. Um, because it, it worked with Sokka and the boomerang, so I don't see why they wouldn't do it here with Zuko. But in general, it, this looks good. Usually the problem with book three Zuko is that they get the hair wrong, and because they get the hair wrong, the face is wrong. This actually looks quite good in that it looks like they have a very accurate sculpt of his hair and it's not uh, obscuring parts of his face. You can maybe argue that like his face is a little kind of plain, but it's pretty solid to me. And then another Avatar State Aang in this line, but at least it's a different sort of like mold and that is the final battle Aang. But interestingly, they're doing that before they've ever done like a book three Aang. Uh, and again, Aang is coming also with a fire effect part. Um, these figures are good, but um, just key things, like they don't have ankles, I believe, these figures, um, is probably one of the things that holds them back. Ankles and wrists, if, if these figures had ankles and wrists, I think they'd pretty much be the ideal Avatar action figures. As it stands, lacking, like, to me, notable key points of articulation is the only reason I hold back on going all in on this line. Uh, but I am looking out for like a cheap way to get certain characters and so on. So I, I can see myself picking up some of this wave if it, if it becomes available kind of easily enough, enough to me. Can't see myself, you know, placing like a pre-order on, on a website that I maybe haven't checked out before. But uh, overall, pretty good. And and it means that they're 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 covering ground, I think, quite well. And it's nice to know that they're not just going in order. Like none of these characters are book one. Everything here is book two or book three. Um, and that's fantastic to see because it means that they're they're willing to move around a bit. And I guess that means that next, if they're doing book three Zuko, they're probably going to do book three Aang. They're, so there's, there's going to be another Aang in this line, I would guess. They're going to have to do book three Katara. Finally, someone please, one of these action figure manufacturers, please do a book three Katara. Um some sort of a book three Sokka, uh, whether it be just uh, his normal outfit that he wears there or him in his armor would be fantastic to see. Um, they'll probably want to do another Toph at some point. Um, there's obviously the Toph with the, the, the hat she wears during the invasion, but there's not too many other options, I think, for Toph necessarily. And then after that, I think you do need to get into a bunch of the other characters. You're probably talking at that point about uh, past avatars, the likes of Bumi, Zhang Zhang, Paku, and then of course, the characters that I've been waiting for in terms of like, um, uh, this is a good sign for the line. If any of these manufacturers make a Suki, Mei, or Tai Li, that's really good because it's going to be the first non-Funko Pop of uh, figure of those characters. And, um, it feels like the next wave of this 
probably has to have at least one of those characters in it, in my opinion. So pretty solid overall. Um, and given that like it's here available on eBay for sale, I'm guessing these are going to go up and be available like pretty soon, like uh, pretty much immediately. So now into the New York Comic Con stuff. So um, obviously, like I said, it's happening uh, October 6th to the 9th. So towards the end of the week, but we do have two panels. First of all, there's the Avatar Braving the Elements podcast panel on Thursday. Um, so everyone knows what the Braving the Elements podcast is. Uh, so Dante Basco and Janet Varney are going to be there. I think initially we only had Dante Basco, but now Janet Varney is confirmed to be there as well. And the idea here is obviously that we're focusing on this a little bit because this podcast panel at San Diego Comic-Con did actually have some news. They put out the video uh, that happened right at the start of the panel of Janet Vardy <clears throat> making the announcement that the first Avatar Studios movie will be focused on Aang and his friends. A minimal piece of information, but still an official update on Avatar Studios content at one of these panels. So they've sort of set the precedent that they are willing they can do that uh, and they'll have news. And this is going to be an important one in terms of New York Comic Con. Um, will they have anything to continue that on? Because I'm guessing the cons next year will be the cons that actually have substantial information on Avatar Studios. But I think they need to set the bar that come to the podcast panel because we will have information um, here. Otherwise, I don't really expect much from this. I think 90% of this panel is probably just going to be the same as, as, as ever. Uh, we'll see if they have any other guests, but if it is just Dante Bosco, Janet Varney, then it's just going to be, you know, basically uh, fast track to the Q&A and go from there. And, you know, the hope is pretty much just start, end the podcast, if they have anything news related to say. Um, I, I'd like there to be something, if there is something, I still think it will be quite minimal. It's not going to be anything resembling a proper official announcement, but any extra information on Avatar Studios at this point is good. But um, I really don't think that there's too much hope for this one. Um, then we have the publishing panel. So Avatar Legacy panel, and as you can see here, Abrams, uh, Dark Horse and Magpie. Uh, are going to be here but interestingly they they finally have the guests so uh they have uh alex monique alexandria monique and hetzel brendan conway cara o'neill and rachel silverstein so to go through these in case you don't know who they are alexandria monique is a artist uh for uh the comics uh in patterns and time she is the artist behind cat l's cradle so one of those stories she is the artist behind and then we do know that Alex Alexandria Monique is going to be the artist on the new Legend of Korra comic uh, trilogy. So yeah, a new trilogy, Legend of Korra, and it's going to be Kiku Hughes and Alexandria Monique. So that's um, a significant one there. We have an artist on an upcoming comic in the coming months, Patterns in Time, but also the trilogy that everyone's been waiting for. So that's kind of somewhat positive. It might not necessarily mean there'll be news about the trilogy, but because they mentioned it basically in relation to San Diego Comic-Con, I'd be surprised if we don't get any sort of an update on it. Anne Hetzel is going to be the Abrams Books representative at the panel. I, 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 um, she's, she, she's not like a writer or anything like that. I think it's just this is going to be our... See, Cara O'Neill is their sort of like uh, PR person effectively. I don't know their exact roles at Dark Horse, but you know, the, the, these are going to be equivalents for Abrams and uh, Dark Horse, of course. Um, Brandon Conway uh, works for Magpie Games. He was also at the SDCC panel. Don't think Magpie are going to have a lot here, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, it's going to it's going to happen at a weird time for Magpie because I think we're expecting another update on the Kickstarter this month, which should be the sort of finalized like, okay, here are the full plans for the schedule of um, shipping of this stuff. So we'll see if they have anything to say here. Um, and then Rachel Silverstein is the writer uh, for one of the comics in Patterns in Time. So I uh, I have it here. So you can see Skyscrapers. This is the uh, young Asami and her mother Yasuko's story. And you can see here Rachel Silverstein is the writer on that one. So she's going to be here as well. And that means like I think what they're going for here is okay. They have two Patterns in Time uh, related kind of creators. 
What's weird about the Rachel Silverstein connection is that Skyscrapers is only four pages long. Like, it's a very short comic. And um, so, um, I don't know if that suggests that, like, is it literally just promo work for Patterns in Time? Or does it suggest that there, that Rachel Silverstein probably is involved in more Korra stuff coming up? Um, I forgot that they had actually revealed who the writer was uh, for this comic. Um, so I was kind of thinking, oh, does this maybe confirm Rachel Silverstein is going to be writing the comic? I, I'm not really sure. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But um, what the, the way this looks, of course, is that, like, you know, wh what are Abrams going to talk about? Like, that's probably the most interesting thing here. I don't think anyone's expecting anything from Magpie because they're at an important, like, fulfillment stage of the Kickstarter. They do, they will, I suppose, have the pre-orders to talk about. I'm guessing the pre-orders for the, the books will go live for everyone. And... Um, over the course of the next week or two so they'll have that to talk about but abrams are in a weird spot where they have the calendar coming out but i don't think anyone particularly cares that much about the calendar it's been you know we're, we're getting a few months on from um dawn of yang chen so it kind of feels like are you going to announce the next one because like we know there's a sequel so uh, are they going to be ready to say anything about that because again i don't think there was much from abrams at the last panel even though they had fce it's probably actually more likely there to be news knowing that it is so, kind of like marketing kind of team person at the panel rather than um, uh, FCE just because I think a lot of the creators tend to be so cautious about saying the wrong thing whereas I think the the more behind the scenes people know what they can and can't say more specifically and will actually give information when when it's expected um, and again if the schedule for the Yang Chen books is anything resembling the Kyoshi ones, it is not out of the realm of possibility that now is a decent time to actually make an announcement about the next uh, Avatar novel. That would be good to see. So there's potential in the lineup here. And knowing that they actually did announce like Azula and the Spirit Temple and a new core comic trilogy at the last uh, panel like this, it feels like this is a good chance to actually do a little bit of an update on that. That we're probably at the point now where we probably should be getting the uh, description for Azula in the Spirit Temple, where we actually get an idea of what it's going to be about. And then if the Korra comic trilogy is starting like a few months after Azula in the Spirit Temple, it feels like the right time also to probably do the early announcement on the trilogy. Say what it's called, if you have a cover, show it off, especially because you will have the artist there. That's uh, somewhat notable for me. Um, so hopefully, um, it, it's a weird one where if you just directly like just think about it, like say there was news at Comic-Con at both panels. It feels a little crazy that we go into like an equivalent panel a few months later and our expectations are meant to be nothing when arguably they should be like, yeah, we should be getting news at, at both these panels realistically because Dark Horse still have a lot to talk about. There are, like I, I just explained, there are things that still need to be announced and um, they need to give updates on the two things they talked about. Beast of the Four Nations is still a thing that needs to get discussed uh, at some point. Not that I have much confidence it's going to come up here, but there's a possibility. Uh, Dawn of Yang Chen sequel, of course. Magpie potentially could say something about the next books, the Republic City and the Spirit World books. But like I said, I, I don't think so. Um, and beyond that, it just kind of feels like, okay, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, I... It's one of those things, my, my recommendation is always going to be, don't get yourself overly excited for this. Go in with sort of like, there's potential for news. I don't, I, I don't think there's any reason to be like super negative and just think nothing's going to happen. But don't expect everything to happen at the same time. Given the lineup, there should be at least something coming out of this um, and hopefully that that all works out. So that's where I'm at, sort of middle of the road. Um, I... I have more confidence that there's something maybe coming out of the publishing panel. Um, Braving the Elements is obviously going to be super hit and miss, but it will be telling after that announcement I come at SDCC if they do or do not do anything here in terms of what the connection are and I suppose the time frame for things. Because like 
sure, we're maybe speculating next year is going to be the big information year for Avatar Studios. But if we're potentially not expecting the first um, release of a Avatar Studios project until mid to late 2024, even next year might not be the big panels that we're quite expecting. So it, a lot depends on just how informed they want to keep us uh, when it comes to those updates. I'd like to see something just so we don't end the year basically with like next to no information. So um, yeah, in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are on uh, the new wave of McFarlane five inch figures. What are your thoughts on this lineup? Um, and then yeah, the New York Comic Con coming later in the week. Do you think anything will happen at the podcast panel, at the publishing panel, knowing the guests that we now have? Um, and I know I, I mentioned, I think in previous videos that McFarlane, their um, panel also mentions Avatar. But reflecting on it, I'm pretty sure that the mention of Avatar there is potentially James Cameron's Avatar. Because I think Dark McFarlane have licenses for both Avatar and James Cameron's Avatar. And I think most of the time, officially, companies always refer to it as either Avatar The Last Airbender in full or Legend of Korra in full and not just Avatar on its own as the franchise. So that's that unfortunate thing. There's still a chance that they have news about both, of course. Um, but I do think the mention of it in the panel probably is more about the Avatar movie, which I think is, is out somewhat soon. Uh, again, I don't really care too much about the other Avatar. This uh, this is the Avatar, of course, that I like. Um, ATLA, Korra, Avatarverse, whatever way you want to call it. Um, but that's that. So in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are on this. But uh, that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.